If you guys are enjoying the content here, definitely check out patreon.com slash party with strategy. Extra episode every week, four extra episodes a month. It's only $5 for the whole month. You get four extra episodes. That's literally less than a cup of coffee. In today's climate of pay more, get less, we're bringing back pay less, get more. Let's go, champ. Join the Strat Pack, patreon.com slash party with strategy for extra content. We'll see you over there. Enjoy the rest of the episode. Dollar menus are gone. Did you see Dollar there's a, the, the Footlong's new promotion is six dollars for a six inch? Oh my god! What no, the fuck no. is happening, bro? Uh, yeah, yeah. What is happening? And the scariest thing is that like, it's the prices are never going to go back down. No, no. There's never well, going to be a, dude. Like cars are like a hundred grand now. Like you know, houses are you know in this around here. Like I don't live far from here, dude. Like a starter home in my neighborhood is like six hundred thousand dollars. It's like insane for a shithole. You it's know? insane. Yeah, like yeah. how wh- how how are we gonna last? What's I don't gonna know. happen? I don't know. I, I literally don't know. It's a little terrifying, but let's get back to something a little less terrifying. What, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna say. What was the thing that when you and me and Dolo and Apollo were over here talking till like 6 a.m. that one night of the thing, uh, the fucking flux capacitor from 2016 that altered our timeline? Oh, the, <laughs> you know uh, that's talk- Dolo's, you know that's Dolo's thing. Yeah, the uh, oh, the, um, the ha- Hadron Collider, yeah, I believe. Yeah, that we all live in some weird... Uh, oh, yeah, the Hadron yeah. Collider when they activated it? Yeah, yeah, so the counter to that was supposed to be the Eclipse. Oh, the eclipse that just happened. So that proved Dolo wrong. Well, th- no, it pro- allegedly proved him right because, like Diamond Cut said, he, there was a conspiracy where that eclipse was what was supposed to bring us back to 2017 or 16, whenever that like shift but happened. The prices have not gone down, so <laughs> it's a uh, you know I don't know how fast it works. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's like the next day. So Taco in like, Bell's in, like a month, to- in like a month from now, <laughs> when you play the same club. Go with Aaron to the to Taco Bell, yeah. and get the exact same meal. And if the prices have gone down, then maybe we're on it, our way back here. It's either like the prices are going to go down, or there's going to be some new promotion, right? Like, oh, we have a dollar menu. Like, like the dollar menus are gone, and it's going to be so long that they've been gone that someone's going to bring it back as if it's some new new thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, yeah. It's like uh th- there's no more 24 hours walmart 24 hours stopped everything everything 24 hours stopped over covid i was gonna say that's okay that is yeah that's explained away by covid which you, sucks but yeah like and and i'm waiting for the day that some fucking marketing meeting with some jamoke is in have, there yeah how yeah. about this idea how yeah, about this crazy idea exactly like, so crazy, it, might yeah, it might actually work <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah that's like i bro walmart 24 hours was a dj's dreamland like i, I never I thought to go are you talking about the one on diversity i never went to that one i'd okay. always go in the burbs uh skokie oh, on uh Tui. I, I never thought to go to walmart after the club ever N- not necessarily after the club but like on a monday night when i don't have shit to oh. do i get all my toilet paper get all okay. my grocery shopping okay. get everything i need like I there's no traffic that. on the streets there's no traffic in walmart i like that i just did all of my like daytime shopping things at one in the at morning 3 a.m yeah. wow why did I never do that? I, I feel like know. I missed a whole like. Yeah, you definitely did. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Man. You mean I can go shopping at any time? Of the day? Seriously, I'm like re- reevaluating my whole life, <laughs> yeah. like especially now because like we've had this conversation that like you know since I got out of DJing as for a living, you know I've been slowly inching my way to back to a normal human being timeline You're where I'm not up early. Yeah. Um, and now I feel like I, my whole life, my whole DJ life has been wasted <laughs> yeah, for not yeah. uh, not grocery shopping at three in the morning. Yeah, what were you doing on the streets with the regular folks, bro? I don't know. Waiting like, in line at Mariano's afternoon. Shout out to Mariano's. Our favorite. I go to Mariano's weekly. It's the best grocery store ever. I'm an Aldi guy now. Are you? Big oh, Aldi well, guy. Yeah, okay. There's like three of them over here. Well, there's one right behind me, the studio on... Yep. That's one. Whatever that. And then there's one right by the Walmart on Diversity and Hermosa. Yep, that's right. Yep. And then there's the one right off the Belmont exit of the highway that they that's just That's also put, true. Where the Best Buy. Oh, that's right. The is. huge one. Yeah. Sorry for all our our, our out of town <laughs> listeners here. We're like 
<laughs> talking about specific intersections. Well, and, there's an Aldi somewhere near you, and you need to get there. Yeah, because it's the best. I don't know if they're I've, cheap. I don't know if I've been in an Aldi be sponsorship though. Bro, yeah, <laughs> Aldi is the shit. And talking about a, at a time where everything's expensive, groceries yeah. are mad expensive. Aldi's cheap as fuck. See, I will give Mariano's props because I don't think. I mean, things are more expensive, but not like five times what they were a couple of years ago. I yeah. feel like they've like mitigated the inflation a little bit. And it helps too when you steal from the self checkout to keep your bill low. So <laughs> normally I would I would be uh I would I would agree with you, but Mariano's is a Chicago and I didn't know this. Mariano's is a Chicago company and that they're very small and they only have like all you know the few Mariano's around here. I don't think they exist outside of Chicago. Okay. The, okay. The people it, that own it live here. It used to be that. I think now they're owned by Kroger. They are, but I okay, yeah, you're right. You're right, yeah, you're right. So I don't know if it's all of them though, but I know at least the one by where I live, like you'll see the Kroger branding on some of it. So okay. I kind of just like fuck man. I only so I only figured this out because Erica, you know Erica, my wife, works uh, she's a makeup artist. Uh, and does like works for like really high end brands, and she met Mrs. Mariano was like a client of hers. Oh, nice! And I was like, oh damn! Like they're actually like a Chicago like company, and I, I you know, like you said, I don't think they own it anymore. But well, no, um, I, think this, it was I would same. feel bad stealing from yeah. little old yeah. Mrs. Mariano. Well, I'm gonna stop now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they're gonna look back at us and be like, wait a minute. Well, I've heard that uh, that a lot of places are doing away with that now because they're like, well, we kind of figured out that people are fucking stealing half the shit that they're you know walking out of here with. There's like, just a, a, a weird feeling of like, all right, you want me to do the work of somebody that you're supposed to be paying. So, so that I'm going to pay myself. I'm going to get okay. a little employee discount. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I do get a little upset uh, when I, you know, we go grocery shopping for like two or three weeks and we get like $300 worth of shit and there's no bagger. And I'm like doing it myself while trying to pay and fucking, you know, give them my Mariano's cut. Like, I'm like, oh, come on. I don't, don't make me do this. Like, yeah. It's all the whole system's fucked up. It is. The, the whole world's just going to and... explode at some point. Honestly, like I'm ready for it, to be honest. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm ready to. I'm like, ready for it. it. Yeah. Ready to go. yeah. It's time. There's nothing that beats the feeling of being secure and protected while commuting in the city. Kinfolk Concierge is Chicago Land's premier armed chauffeur service. Their expertise range in services that provide VIP, car services, and personal protection. DM with the code STRATEGY or give them a call and let them know you saw this promo on the podcast for 30% off of your next ride. That's a 30% discount. That's a big discount. That makes a $100 ride $70. Bucks. Don't hesitate to book your next elite level experience. Contact Kinfolk Concierge today. Back to the episode. But let's, uh, before I peed and interrupted the whole flow of this uh, podcast, we were talking, <laughs> oh, God. you know, being a DJ and the best sets you've ever heard were all music that you didn't know because you're a music lover and you're open minded and you're not like a instant gratification yeah. club going asshole. So that's a good thing. Yeah. The problem is in the nightclubs, you're just. There's not a lot of people who are ready to hear something new. They so, just want what they want. This is okay. So this is a great story from 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 DJ time. Um, uh, when I guess it was like 2018 ish, maybe um, when Phenom left Underground. Mm -hmm. um, I had done a number. Uh, so I took over. I took over Saturday nights at Underground uh, in the side room uh, when he left, and I had done a number of guest spots at underground and would just murder it every time um you know the management whoever was there um uh especially Ar arturo when he was there i'm gonna have him on the pod oh you are weeks, yeah. tom i said what's up um he uh eventually fired me very not very quickly but uh, he fired me a couple times i think too yeah so <laughs> he i would come in there and play like I would never go totally balls to the wall, just random fucking weird shit that only I knew about. But like I was known, and this is not just underground, like this is everywhere that the dude that would be like, first of all, not play shit dance remixes of every rap song that was out. I would actually play original things, but a, a wide variety of things. Right. Um, once in a while at clubs, I think that's needed because people that go to the clubs all the time, once in a while, 
hearing something different, I think is a good thing. When, uh, when I was a resident there, I definitely tried to keep it more, uh, you know, mainstream ish, but they, they hired me partially because whoever was in the main room was going to play all the top 40 stuff and dance remixes and stuff. And we were like, yo, you like, you know, your taste can sustain a room where if people want to hear something different, they can come. And it turned, it ended up being that that side room when I was there was making more money a lot of times than the main room on a number of nights. Yeah. Um, but I think eventually like, you know, and no, I never got a reason why I got let go, but I think it was just because like, uh, not that I didn't play ball, but just, you know, like I'm not, I'm not a top 40 club DJ. Yeah. I'm not. I played in a lot of top 40 clubs, had some residences at some very top 40 clubs, but that's not who I am. Yeah. You know, let me ask you this as the DJ that does that well, right? Yeah. You play, you can play in a nightclub, but you're gonna give the people new music yes. that they don't necessarily know. Yeah. When you're going for that, let's say you're playing Kanye and Jay Paris, you're getting ready to drop something for them that they don't know. Yeah. You get into that record they're not really feeling it. What What's your mindset? What goes through your mind? Are you like, okay, they weren't ready. Yeah. Let me reset, give them stuff they know, get them back, yeah. and then try again. Yes. So um, also one of the reasons why I got hired at a lot of places is because they knew that I could move through things and switch direction instantaneously. Um, there's actually a quote. I remember, I'll remember this forever. Uh, years ago, probably 20 years ago, Jesse De La Pena, who uh, is one of the most important DJs in Chicago history, still is, um, was interviewed for a newspaper. I don't remember what the context was. Um, it was for some residency, maybe, but it was actual print newspaper. And he had this quote. He was asked about the same thing, like clearing a dance floor. And he said uh, something to the effect of, I'm never afraid to clear a dance floor because I know how to bring them back. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that is like that such a great quote. And it's something that I've always kept in the back of my head. Um, I, I feel like we talked about this last time that there's a lot of younger, young, old, whatever DJs that only play one style of music, you know, they're tech house bros or they only play bad bunny, you know, reggaeton stuff or they only play like, you know, uh, little baby, uh, you know, that type of rap music stuff. If they're in a club playing that shit for two hours and people get bored, they don't have any other option. Mm -hmm. They don't know what to do because they, that option does not exist for them. I am the opposite. If I drop something immediately and I can tell it's not working or even just in general, man, like I, uh, you know, like played a bunch of, uh, you know, like EDM nights or whatever, where people are playing house for four hours. Like, I can I can hop on, play some house, different styles of house, dip into rap music really quick, hit them with some shit for 20 minutes, gradually go back up or just kind of dip around a little bit um, because I know how to do that. And that's one of the things that I've excelled at in my career. And that's one of the reasons I've, I've had a career. Um, the three style stuff when I, after I won, you know, the US and got a little bit of a name for myself and started playing much bigger shows that only helps you to get in the door. Like you need to be a competent enough DJ to stay there. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, um, uh, and also like I stopped, uh, I stopped really planning anything sets, especially just for mainstream clubs. Like, cause I don't, especially if it's in a new city or a club I've never played before, I don't know what the crowd's going to be like. I don't want to have any preconceived notions about what they're going to like or what they don't like. And I'll just play off of what the opener plays yeah i don't want to have like this like big intro and like you know 30 minutes of 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 cutting edge new house uh you know and go and find out that they only want to hear little baby for three hours you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Yeah. so i uh, i stopped preparing things i i have my tracks are prepared i know what stuff goes together i know what left turns to take uh if things aren't working um but yeah preparing sets i don't i, I haven't done that in like years yeah that's for club stuff live show things are different like but because live show things you can pretty much do what you want yeah you know yeah um a little more preparation a little yeah. more uh, uh for big live shows a hundred percent of it is prepared um but again that's that's different from a like a dance like a well 
a dance club. There's no dance clubs anymore, like from a, a club, club, top 40 club. Yeah, that's funny. A that bottle you, service club. It's funny that you were talking about uh, having an intro that fucks up the flow because Trentino was talking about how he had to stop doing his yes. his T R E N T yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, spelled out intro because he said it's one minute long. Yeah, it's only one minute long. It seems like a forty-five minutes. Yeah, yeah. And he said in that one minute, he's cleared entire rooms before. Yes. Well, so that I mean, I don't know if you, I don't know how much you talk to him about me and his history of us doing the four turntable sets and all this. Like, not even for a second, really. Because yeah, yeah man, we used to do tons of shows all over the country. Both. Yeah. Um, and some were more show oriented things, some were top 40 clubs. And sometimes we would go in there and just be like, you know what? We're just going to have to play music, yeah. you know, and not do any flashiness because a, it's not the spot for it or people don't really know who we are, don't care. You know, um, there's some things, uh, uh, you know, again, I always preach the, the show live show things versus like the club things. There's two completely different things. Like mm -hmm. we would get booked at like live venues to do more of a live set or festivals or whatever. Um, but a lot of times, yeah, we would try to do cool things in the club individually or me and him together. Um, and it just doesn't work and that's fine, you know, but this is also, you know, 2011 to 20 or 2010 to like 2016 or 17 when he really moved and think of how much more you could get away with as a DJ then versus now. Yeah. No, like, 30 seconds people are bored now you know yeah. like if you're not playing fucking bad bunny or you know little baby right 10 little baby records back to back you yeah. know like, it's crazy because like you grab their attention with something you're doing something that is disrupting the flow of the club yes. right you're you're dropping a bomb you're dropping a big yeah. impact or something and then yeah. they're like oh what's going on and then if you start doing something cool they don't necessarily even can't comprehend it. Like they don't even know what scratching is. Yes. Cause so they just hear scratching, but they've never like seen. Yes. It. And, and honestly, you know, that can, like you said, it's a minute long and some of our intros were even longer, but like we, um, we wouldn't do that for, for club stuff because again, think of how it is now. People just don't care and they don't care about skill things in DJing anymore, yeah. you know, which is unfortunate. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, um, and we always used to say like back in the day when we were do when we were playing a lot of four turntable sets, it's like, what can we do to have the crowd look at us? You know, like again, more for the club things where there might be a stage, but people don't really pay attention to you. Uh, you know, it's, it's obviously our, our, our massive egos that we're like, we want people to, to see what we're doing here. Like, what what can we do to have people look at us? And a lot of times it was quick, stop the music, scratch breaks or whatever. But also that stuff is to like reset the vibe, you know, mm -hmm. like can it go a little long sometimes? Yeah, but I still like, you know, I'll, I'll do that still on occasion when I DJ. It's like, you got to fucking stop the music and, uh, you know, people don't understand. DJs don't understand how, how big of a tool that silence is, yeah. you know? Yeah, um, yeah like well even when you did like the i still remember i've gone multiple times we used to do v live yeah once a month, yeah and you guys would do like the dj drummer thing. oh so that okay no not v live uh we'll stop power company well no you did it at v live as well too because i remember oh we did Gordo, yeah no we did yeah, yeah. Gordo told me he's just like no yeah who do, who do you have as a dj i remember he told me it was gonna be you two guys yeah i've never seen you when you guys did it together with Trentino on the drums. Yeah. But that, again, a time, it, it's in its own time. Yeah. It was like when the DJ drummer thing was pretty big. Totally, too. yeah. But no one really did it in Chicago because you guys were really the only ones that branded it. We did, much. right. And so this is, yeah, this is like 2010, 2011, um, 2012 maybe. Uh, LaSalle Power Company was this massive, V-Live was a massive venue. So LaSalle Power Company was a massive venue on LaSalle Street. Um and we used to have the third floor. The third floor was like held like a thousand people or whatever. And we would do a monthly there with four turntables, three mixers, and a full drum set. And the owner was like, play whatever the fuck you want. He's like, there's enough people in here because it was three floors. Mm -hmm. Like we were playing like, like late nineties drum and bass records and him playing drums. And we would have a packed room the whole night. I remember when the first Skrillex album came out, me and him played like the whole album, like scaring. <laughs> 
scaring the hoes like you would not believe <laughs> but we still had a packed room every time we played there yeah. because nobody like and it, again it was a different time where even if you didn't like that couple minutes of that kind of music it was such a visual experience too that people would stay because they had never seen anything like that before yeah like we took up a massive mm. stage like bigger than this room yeah four, four turntables four decks, three, three mixers, mixers full drum what's kit. the third mixer for uh so actually back then i think we only did two later on when we were doing festivals um it was so we could run uh back then LaSalle power company days we were both using rain 57s which were only two channel mixers mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. eventually both moved on to like eight and nine hundred pioneers where we had four channels but uh we wanted to be able to use uh, other kind of gadgets like uh like little mini synths and stuff like that or like noise maker things when we oh, would play yeah. live <laughs> so four channels would get filled up relatively quickly yeah and the third mixer was so say he's doing a blend of two records um i could apply effects to his entire mix right so right, do right. like like do weird uh uh you know like eq swaps or like think of him doing a complex blend over you know 16 bars of music where things are coming in and out and also he's applying some echoes and you know maybe some fader things so things are happening consistently mm -hmm. then i then take reverb and like bring things up and back down and like it makes the whole thing so dynamic and again there's probably we played in front of some huge crowds if there's one person that knows what's going on like we you know but it it's it, it makes it a whole nother uh, different experience to have you know like six things happening at the same time you yeah, know yeah. so that middle mixer would be i could affect his entire mix he could affect mine and also we could have multiple things happening at the same time but yeah, again yeah, this yeah. is more we would obviously play other people's music in addition to our own but this was more of it like we were always like how do we make djing into a live music experience you know yeah um that's definitely a way to do it yeah and there's a lot of four uh, you know there's a lot of like dj duos and stuff that were around in the time and some that still are but i don't know if any of them really took it to the level that we did of like especially with the drums and the performance aspect of it yeah there's no shot that anybody yeah. was fucking with that um and there was a lot of people like uh, i don't know if you guys remember easy or eas wireless which was shifty and um inferno uh, yeah they did a lot of crazy stuff too that. but it was a little different um because inferno was uh an amazing musician so he would do keys he was doing like live the, remixes. so he would do live remixes yeah. stuff and then when him and shifty did stuff that you know they were both dmc dudes yeah they both were u.s champions so like those two together um were doing what we me and trentino were doing but but different yeah um you know that so, makes sense yeah yeah i miss like that's like an old school thing right where lasalle power co was such a big name in and of itself that they packed that room i don't want to say that the dj didn't matter but it, it didn't really matter as much you weren't like like now you have to bring in a dj that has a draw yes. to like pack a room yeah back then it was just the about club. the venues it was about the, the venues. venue yeah. just had its own clout and yes. its own draw yeah that you could put anybody in there and obviously you want somebody who's doing a good job and can yeah. hold a crowd read a crowd do a good job but like i miss that it didn't matter sure? you didn't have the weight of promotion on your shoulders as a dj and that's that's a one of the million reasons why i'm not really active as a dj anymore and i was always like yo i am not that dude that's going to bring 50 people like you know uh, th there are some places in the country i could go talking about austin uh you know there are places i can go to austin and draw 40 people yeah i can go to indianapolis and draw some people like but if you're expecting me to be like a you know whether it's a resident here or uh you know a gig in seattle like i'm not going to be that dude that's going to bring a million people i'm not going to be that dude that's going to have a bunch of girls in a booth uh i'm not going to be that that dude that's fucking hanging out with the bottle people that's just not me that's not what i do and yeah. i don't care about that mm -hmm. um but I, 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 again, back in, in, in those times, I was lucky enough to, to play at all those places because, you know, again, the, like people would go to the club because the club had its own experience. Mm -hmm. And if you were a dope DJ, then people would come back and you people would follow to you. That you experience. added to it. You added to it. But yeah, you're right. The, the weight of promotion was not on you a hundred percent. 
You yeah. Know? And that sucks now that it's like that. Yeah. And it's like that for 99% of the places. The right. only place that I could really say doesn't feel like that at all is Tao. Yes. Tao has their yes. own name. They yes. have their own brand. Yes. They have their own system. They yeah. get people in that door, bro. I opened up Tao 11, uh, 11 o'clock on Saturday night. By 11.15, that bitch was filled up. Filled. And they were raging like it was uh, yeah. EDC in there. Yeah. I'm playing records. I'm like running out of music to play. Literally by tw 12.30... Metro goes on at one. Yeah. I was shook, bro. I was like, What were you playing? I was it all rap stuff or like it was all like cool tech house remixes, oh, like good okay. remixes of 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 good radio music. It was a lot of like corny, what I would consider corny, but like I'm now getting into the space where it's like less corny for me. I, I enjoy playing it, but like Justin Bieber baby. I have like a 75 BPM sort of like a almost like a juke remix of it. That was oh. easily the biggest song I played. That's like awesome. the place fucking exploded. Really? But by 1230, I'm in my head like what do I do? Bombing yeah. myself because yeah. I'm like, okay, this crowd is so fucking hype right yeah. now that yeah. they just want everything. They yeah. want it now. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not trying to burn Metro. Right. I'm running out of like good music to play with that energy. Yeah. I was in a, uh, I was in a bad place. <laughs> so I, that's how I used to be at, uh, in the side room at underground. Like sometimes I would go in there and it'd be slow, but sometimes I would go in there and it was already at capacity and there was like lines, you know, blocks away to get into the side room and the main room. Yeah. And dude, there was times where I literally went on and just tore through things for like 20 minutes and I'm like, I have three hours left. Yeah. I just tore through all the big, because people were absolutely going bananas there. And that, but so back, to, back to Tao, that's also, I feel like you're right. That is probably the only club, but then also like when Apollo was the resident there, like he would be the one to like the glue that opened for everybody and to like make it an experience, you mm -hmm. know, it's mm -hmm. already its own experience. But when you have people that know what they're doing, like you, like Metro heavy, um, you know, they wouldn't be as successful as they were if it was not for guys like you. you yeah, know? it definitely adds to it. I mean, Metro came on and absolutely crushed he's it, bro. A, yeah, he's a Absolutely just fucking yeah. took that place. They were so ready, bro. They were chomping at the bit, yeah. drooling, waiting for, you know, the perfect nightclub set of all that fun, yeah. hard-hitting, good yeah. house that's just... His energy is so good, and his timing watching him is like he like puts on clinics you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he doesn't i don't even like i don't even think that he knows how good he is or or how good his timing is and his taste and just there's a lot that goes into being a good dj and he has like all of it you know yeah um and his whole persona and everything like there's yeah yeah he was ripping the mic too yeah just everything yeah it was it was perfect you could yeah. tell he's been doing it for a long time and yeah. puts effort into every single aspect of it to make his set as good as it can possibly yeah be. and honestly like i remember too when trentino lived here um for a while uh uh um was it soundbar uh was it soundbar no not spot yeah no i think it was soundbar soundbar yeah for a while uh on some saturdays trentino was in the main room and metro would be in that round room yeah, yeah and yeah. between the both of them just the talent that and and seeing metro even work that small room in this tiny little booth uh yeah the round room the red room the red room yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like just being like oh my god dude this dude is and this is like 10 years ago you know yeah. like yeah he's uh he's he's unbelievable yeah, yeah. it was great but Tao, Tao's the only spot that's like that and i think yeah. that there's too many people who like that's just the system that's just what it is these days right yeah. you get brody jenner in there because he has a million followers on instagram yeah. and you know that his promotion is going to help promote your nightclub yeah yeah and yeah. it's sort of it's ass backwards now but somebody has to come and break the chain right like who is that going to be what's that going to be I don't know, but yeah, it, it, that's how everything works, right? And that, you know, things work the way that they're working for so long, and then somebody or something comes and switches up the system. And I feel like probably John Boy is is that thing where it's got its own name, and it and it really yeah, doesn't okay. necessarily matter who's DJing in there. I say that promotion wise. Okay. Now DJ abilities is a different thing. It definitely matters who's in there. Okay. 
but like they're gonna have a line down the street no matter what okay but they're also that's Dante's not spot, right? that's dante's spot yeah okay. but they're also not like a a club club they are right. a, they're a disco like bar really okay yeah i mean that's that's one place and i hope that they do well and they really do like you know disrupt some things but i feel like us as djs has been waiting for something to happen for the last like eight years at this point you yeah. know where it started getting uh, like not great like i don't know 2016 17 18 where things started to, to shift a little bit the where Adrian the dj Collider. kind of yeah right right <laughs> didn't matter anymore you know like you're saying like it doesn't like that's when good djs started to get replaced by uh you know some fucking dude or girl on instagram with a million followers that's dj'd for a month you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they're up there fucking straight train wrecking and nobody cares you know yeah um, someone's got to take the power and it's back. only gotten it, yeah like someone needs to have like pride in that right like like and but honestly i don't know i again i feel like every all of us have been waiting for something like this to happen for so long and honestly i don't think it's gonna happen anymore you don't think so i don't you, i don't know what it would be because but, what, but you think it's just gonna continue on the way that it is right now like they're just gonna milk the system it's easy that way until People the world have, explodes fucking six months from now yeah, probably, i mean yeah <laughs> probably i mean that is like as time goes on it is shifting more towards the way that it is now in terms of like everyone's gaining their own little following on social media yeah. tiktok's so big and it's you know just regular folks have their own viral videos that right. go but that's the like, thing then you put these tiktok motherfuckers in a club and they don't know what to do because they've only they only have experience in putting together 30 second or 15 second little clips like you put these dudes in front of uh in front of a club crowd for an hour you know like two hours an hour i watched what are they happen. gonna do i watched in houston they had sickick booked he played on Friday, mine and Dolo's night. Okay. Dolo had to press play on his CDJ for him. Yes. For the 42-minute mix yep. that was on yep. the left deck. Yep. This happened in Indianapolis at Envy because I played there. Uh, maybe you should blur out that club name because <laughs> those are my homies and I don't want to like dog them out. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, this happened at Beep. Uh, <laughs> but I played there on the Friday and he played there on the Saturday. Yeah. And I, I, I'm friends with all the DJs in Indianapolis uh i all i got the lowdown for the next day of like all the same shit like dude needed an s9 uh you know dude had to put you know like i felt the most bad for our our sound and like guy tommy who had to go fill this dude's rider with the s9 and extra monitors yeah, and microphones yeah, yeah. and like for what? all this shit for, what? for literally for what? Nothing. For nothing for optics yeah for optics, optics that's yeah. it it's yeah. all optics that's yeah. all anything is today and, and that's the thing fun. man is like apollo showed me a couple videos of his where like he actually this is not me co-signing him whatsoever. I've seen a couple of videos where I'm like, okay, this is cool. Like, this is cool. Like, I, I, I like the production's there is, for sure. Whoever's right. making the music behind the mask is making good music. Yeah. But a, a, in terms of performance, like he's got this mix on and it goes off for the first ten minutes, yeah, and then for the next thirty minutes, it's just very stagnant. Yeah, everyone's kind of waiting around. We see the whole crowd because they, because th you're not. Part of the job of a DJ is to look at the crowd and say, all right, they're not feeling this. Let's go here. Yeah. Oh, they like this. We'll bring them here. You right, know, you're right. reading. If you just got a mix on, you don't know what There's the fuck no, you're doing. That's what I'm saying. You're not feeling that. And that, that also, duty. yeah. And that also applies to, you know, a lot of the producers that are now get booked for DJ, DJing in clubs. Like they have one or two records that do well, whether it's on TikTok or like actual DJs playing them like from Beatport or whatever. But most of these guys don't know how to DJ. So like, you know, they go up there and they either have, you know, a whole mix planned out, their hour tech house set or whatever, um, or they are just up there pulling a Grimes, you know, at Coachella, just train wrecking oh, everything, yeah. you know, Sourcing like, VPN, yeah, so yeah. That was you know? bad. Yeah. I mean, I love that she sold it as like someone else's fuck up. But even that is terrible too, because like that's even worse, bro. Like, it's like, oh wait, you you this didn't is, even analyze. This is probably the biggest gig of your career, yeah. and yeah, it's just the whole dude. That's the whole thing, man. That is DJing in a nutshell. That is nightlife in a nutshell. That is the state of the world in a nutshell. Nobody wants to put in the work to do anything anymore. It's all instant gratification. It's all 
um, what's the least amount of work I can put in to get the biggest result. And I love, I, you know, again, this is, it's unfortunate that happened to her or if it happened to anybody else, whatever. People needed to see that. Yeah. Is that going to change anything? No. No. No shot. And again, that's unfortunate, man. I hope, uh, you know, I hope uh, John John Boyd uh, does well. Uh, Tao's going to continue, continue to do well no matter what. I don't know what that change is going to be and what it's going to come from for things to get worse and, well, and think, to get to get better. And that is a big reason why I don't have much interest in DJ anymore. Yeah. Well, and there's also, there's not a lot of competition in the space, right? We're talking nightclubs. We're talking like a, a true legitimate nightclub. Yeah. How many of those exist right now in Chicago outside of, outside of Tao and probably Prism? Well, all right, all right. Battle raps cause I've shaken grown men to the point that they can't even face their own friends. Ha. That's why they rhyme about jewels, not life, cause the ice on which they skating is so thin. That's what I love about the human soul. It'll usually show when the truth ain't told. Ha. Use a lie.